<laughs> I'm standing here in the University of Newcastle television production studio, where our students are making this program on creative industry careers. Sitting on our lounge, we have Communication Studies graduate, Gillian Benke, and she's going to talk to us about her pathway from high school to university and then a career as an artist. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Gillian. It's great to see you. Well, we have some great footage um, here of your art. Maybe you could talk us through how that's going. Some people find that they're quite playful or um, they've got humour about them, which maybe they do, but I, I find that there's something a bit more kind of conceptual about the pieces, especially the stuff, the more later stuff that I've done. And, I've, and I, people sort of think, oh, you know, they've got these little personalities and characters, which I, I see that. But I also don't see them as playful, and I and I um, and I find that it's definitely the the media that I'm working with, which is fabric, and often in other ones, um, buttons and things like that, and they can be quite cute, and I sort of like oh it's it's I've struggled with that because I I, I can see that, but I don't want cuteness. I want to explore an idea, or a um or a kind of concept that is maybe a little bit darker or a little bit more serious than mm. perhaps I'm um, showing. Take that challenge that, okay, the media itself is quite difficult and because it's playful and I'm not actually wanting that um, playfulness about them, they're not dolls, they're not something that you would play with. So the challenge is to then get something more serious out of this media that mm. may be seen more like a, a craft like it's, it's associated with crafting and I want it to be a conceptual art piece and I, I, I quite like that challenge and at the moment the monotone is working for me. It's going w more monotone with this sort of, um, yeah, it's, it's one colour fabric and it's, and it's just stitching in, in a, one particular colour to get meaning and detail. So as a career, mm. How hard is it to explain to people what it is you do? It's hard to explain because it's not linear and it's not sort of, so it's, it's quite a, um, a, a, an exercise in patience, I think, maybe this career. And, you know, having a little bit of that is sometimes a good thing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we talk about the creative industries as being creative people being able to be creative and yeah. also create small businesses while doing that. So yes. can you talk me through how that sort of came about for yeah. you? You know, as an artist, you kind of need money as well and decided to develop a business of my own, which was a label, I suppose, but they were, it was a label that was selling um, small wearable pieces that were still all fabric and I was making little brooches and I realised after many years of doing that, completely uncommercial and actually it's just really art that I wanted to do. So I um, got a little tiny space set up in a kind of a corner of my house at the moment. So I don't use anything that is um, bought actually, I don't, I don't buy stuffing for it. Um, the fabric is given to me or I get from people that I know that make clothes and these are all offcuts from those. So nothing is sourced uh, with something in mind. It's more the fabric comes to me and it might sit there for a long time and I use it eventually because I decide that that's what I need, that piece I need to use. Have you always worked at home? No, not always. I've um, recently been part of Renew Newcastle and that was a very good opportunity for me um, after having small children to refocus my mm, creative any creative thought that maybe would come along again. Well gallery exhibitions are an important part of being an artist and here's some footage from a recent opening of the University of Newcastle Creative Industries Student Exhibition at Newcastle's Watt Space Gallery. <laughs> Okay, welcome everybody. There are three very different and fascinating exhibitions here tonight um, and they have a lot to offer the attentive viewer. This was my work along with the two smaller panels on either side. Um, I created the work based on my response to the China trip that I went on six months ago with the uni. So creating the grid work was there's one square for every hour that we were there.
my name's Amy. I went on the uh, creative arts tour of Hong Kong and China. I focused on taking pictures of animals mainly that I came across. I've done a series of dog portraits. So I took, I took some photos of dogs um, from each of the cities. So I did um, Hong Kong, Shanghai and Beijing um, and just sort of chose my best from there. The overall landscape was a response to landscapes that I saw and that I photographed and I put together from a few different pieces um, and then I watercoloured over the top to change it because since coming back my memory has been altered. I'm not 100% sure what's real, what has changed, what's different. Um, so that's my response. So thank you all for coming out tonight. I hope you've enjoyed all the works that are here this evening and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Um, what was your experience of going to university? So I did a communication studies at, here at Newcastle University um, because it was under the Bachelor of Arts uh, degree and I decided that doing a, just a straight fine art Bachelor of Arts was not as broad as doing the communications degree. I could do more subjects and that allowed me to go to, to definitely touch on the arts a lot, the visual arts and creative arts that I'd already done a lot of at school. And what subjects did you do at school? Um, all the standard school subjects but then we definitely were um, based in the arts so we did a lot of visual art, a lot of um, fine art a um, lot of classical music. What did you want to be when you left school? Um, I had finished school, I had decided that I was never studying again and I wasn't going to university and I was sort of encouraged by an older sister to just put an application in and defer, which is what I did. I left the country and left all of that kind of study and thoughts behind like that and went off to do other things. Well, here are a few other experiences of current creative industry students. The skills you learn in terms of researching um, new ways of thinking and approaching your art practices, um, it's really good. But for those who really love something and want to get better at it and want to have a really engaging experience where they get to learn from teachers and peers, it's a really valuable investment. Um, well, I want to uh, do art therapy. I've learned that there are a lot of different avenues that you can take when um, getting a degree in fine art. And so, yeah, if I work for a gallery or if I work with the government, you know, something that where I'm either surrounded by or doing art will be fantastic. After university, I want to go to university again and get a master's and then a PhD, and then end up working at a museum as a director of education and outreach for art programs. To try and incorporate more art making into my current practice as a social worker, um, which means expanding what I do in terms of the work with individuals, groups, families and communities. So Gillian, what does the future hold for you? Where do you want to go with this career? Um, I want to exhibit. It's just different stuff. I'd like to do more installations and um, yeah, I want to yeah, sort of create spaces and experiences as well in my work and I think that that's my focus is to not do product design which was sort of part of my past and brought me to this place where I am now but to focus on that and push that as much as I can. If you were to talk to a student yeah. who's at school who's who's looking at the world and trying to work out what they want to be and they might want to go in your sort of path mm. what advice would you give to them? The school you know is is one thing and, and the rest of the world is another so I think yeah finding finding lots of different things to um, skill yourself with maybe and expose yourself to, definitely, yeah. Thank you very much for being with us today, Gillian. It's just wonderful to have you here today. Thank you. So I'm Christy Street. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching See What You Could Be. Thank you.